data lineage. Now, for this, instead of me moving to the Atlin workspace, let's go to let's go to a BI. So this is a simple Tableau instance. We're seeing a dashboard, and the famous question that a lot of people build up, data folks build up via intuition, the number on this dashboard is wrong, right? And how do you answer that? Today it takes, we saw the flow diagram today. It takes a lot of flows, a lot of back and forth between teams, Slack conversations to get this right. But how do you get context right there where you are? Now, if you know the principle that I've been continuously talking about is we want to bring Atlin where data teams are, right? So even with Tableau, you will see on the bottom right, I don't know how many of you can see this on Zoom, uh, Atlin icon. So what this means is that as soon as I open this Atlin icon, all the metadata that we brought in in the first part of the demo is now available in Tableau in context for you, for the data consumer or the business users who's leveraging the Tableau dashboard. So you have the description, you have quick read me. They don't need to ask what this dashboard means. Uh, rich read me, you can put in spreadsheets. You can know which owners are there. You, you, you want to reach out to them on Slack. You don't need to find them. You can reach out to them on Slack. If there are groups, you can add your data team channels. You can look at whether these are verified or not. Uh, there are a ton of stale dashboards, all data teams have. So you know whether you are on the right dashboard or not. And you know when was this last updated, because if this is updated, you know that it's fresh. It's something you can leverage, right? But to answer this question, you need to know, okay, where does this data come from? So we go switch to quickly the lineage right here. You see, okay, this comes from a bunch of data source, data sources, tablet data sources, but hey, we want to know more. So let's jump to a graph view. So now we are switching back to Atlin. We've done a handover. We have got context. We came back from Tableau. Now we're back to Atlin's interface. Now, how we set up lineage is in the form of exploration. A good principle to keep in mind, if you, if you see how engineers debug the code, they, they debug the code via breakpoints. They put different parts of the breakpoints and they go step by step into different breakpoints to understand. The lineage consumption experience for us is also very similar. We want to give a great debugging exploration experience on Lineage. So let's get started. Let's start the exploration approach. So we see a dashboard. We see, hey, there's a data source that's coming in. So let me just expand this. Looks like this is coming from other data source. So we, now it suddenly starts connecting upstream. So we see there are three, three tables that it connects to. So there's fact orders table. There are some other tables which are coming from other schemas and databases, and all of them are feeding into this data source, right? But like, hey, this is verified. I, I can see there's an announcement as well. So if I click this, I can quickly see, hey, data is synced, and this is the this is the frequency it gets synced on. But let's let's go beyond. As soon as we do that, you start seeing a DBT icon here, which means that this these assets are actually getting materialized by DBT. So in fact, if I click any of them right now, you can see the model, uh, you can see the actual query. And in fact, if you want to quickly debug and look at, go back to the DBT Cloud Console, you can, it has a URL, it switches you back and you can come back to the context where you need. We have the last run status, so you know whether this was materialized or not, or this is stale. All the information available right here in your debugging, in your impact analysis, root cause analysis experience. But let's expand this maybe. So let's, I, because I see a warning here, so let's expand this. I think this further comes from some other layer in DBT. And now this comes over from a Postgres table. And if, if I click some of them, you will start seeing, this is where now Fivetran pops up. So Mira was talking about how with the Fivetran metadata API, now we can do cross source lineage. We can see how your data has moved from a Postgres and how you've done ELT uh, to your Snowflake warehouse. Uh, we can do Salesforce. If you're moving data from Salesforce to Snowflake, which is a common pattern that we see with a lot of teams, you can create that end-to-end -end lineage for that. But let's see. So let's see. I want to quickly see how my name is getting progressing. Not only at a table level, now you can see at the column level how your data is going across. So if I click name from your analytics, from your uh, application layer database to your staging layer to your mart to the final table which is powering the powering the bi dashboard you have end to end uh, column level lineage that is available right here now let's take 
Now, when I'm looking at this name, there is an interesting tag that I see here, which is the PII tag, which is uh, uh, Vikas was talking about a bunch of tags, access control, uh, things like that. So maybe let's let's look at fact order stable. So if I look at this, the fact order stable, and let me look at a quick preview. Maybe I'm a data scientist and I want to get a quick sample. I want to look at a quick sample, but as a data admin, somebody as a producer, I don't want to open up PIIs for the data scientists. I just want them to evaluate this, whether it makes sense from the models. And if I go to the location name, you will see the name as marks. So as a data scientist or as a producer, you can be comfortable. You know that your PIs are not getting uh, leaked, right? And because at Atlin, we know the relationships across your data stack, your modern data stack. If you are able to, which you're saying, if you're able to add PIIs, add name at your analytics layer, maybe the engineer who knows because they have the one who've created the schema, if they add it as the name at the Postgres layer, at Atlin, we can help you propagate across, across your modern data stack. So that you know that if your PIs are set up, we will ensure those pass through across the data stack. So let's go back again. Let's do a quick recap. So we looked at contextual embedded metadata, end-to-end -end lineage. Uh, we brought in operational metadata. You saw the approach around classification propagation. And once the tags are in, you can leverage data preview masking and ensure your data is secure. Uh, which is why we're super excited about the Snowflake uh, tags so that we can actually push some of these classifications back to Snowflake uh, as well uh, from an access control perspective.